What up, teacups? It's your fairy vlog mother, and welcome back to another episode of Stain's Gate. I'm in the process of trying to restart the recording. It skipped past a few lines when I was clicking back into the game, but rest assured, you have not missed anything important. Um, our arsenal of future gadgets is up to eight, but this is just the beginning. We have a total of 108 inventions to create. Okay. Like in that tennis manga, right? I get it. I don't. I don't know what those tips at the top are supposed to be for. No, it's the number of earthly desires in mortals, you channel junkie? I think he means YouTube jun junkie? I don't know. And I, thought I the... <laughs> and I thought I told you not to interrupt me while I'm talking, much like I just tried to do. Sorry, voice actor. Yeah, I wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. Yes, I get it. You're breaking the fourth wall. I'm not talking to myself. Can't you see I'm talking to the person behind the monitor? No, I didn't. And how dare you assume my gender because I am not a he. Ah, he just grinned. What are you grim grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor. Just say, don't look at me. Okay. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, I agree with you. It seems that our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they think we're in the game. I doubt it's even occurred to them. Ugh. Uh, but aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? Did they, did they really just go there? I don't know if I can continue with this game. Oh my god. That's different. Those girls are like my waifus. Nobody cares about your harem. Thank you. Uh, but Mayushi touched on a very interesting theme, you know? Like, what if we're actually just characters in a game? Anyway, how can you know for sure? Oh my god, I get it! I get it! You don't need to take this long to try to break the fourth wall. Uh, no. Come on! You such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system because we're so damn edgy. Yeah, he's nice. Chunibyo. Bro. What does that even mean? Oh, thank God we moved scenes. I step back from the monitor. Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character, Alpaca Man. What? Okay, again, I played four episodes of the WikiHow game today, and I just keep seeing weird shit where I'm not supposed to be seeing weird shit. This is just... what? This is a game called Alpaca Man 2. Where you speak to Alpacaman via microphone and watch him react. Okay, they were talking to this guy the whole time. The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I only find the ugly part of the ugly cute to be true. I bought it yesterday, 500 yen used, headset included. What? I turned to Daru with a menacing glare. <laughs> Shut it, Haka. I'm in. I'm no Chunibyu patient. I don't know what that means. I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. Oh. 
Kyoma da. I am holy in Kyoma. So you said this show. That's your character's name, right? Yeah, yeah. Dare no ikka to no communication no tore nasa wa. Dore dake tatte mo naora nai na. Oh, Daru, your communication skills are beyond repair. Anime no hokai ja boku ga itsu mo ba o mori ageteru tsu. I'll have you know, I go to a ton of offline meets, and I'm always the life of the party. This fat, bespectacled guy is my brother-in-arms and right-hand man, Hashire Taru, nickname Daru. He's a hardcore otaku, and he can always, you can always find him in front of the computer playing games and watching anime. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him anything's fine as long as it's moe. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition despite his insistence that software is his forte. He shows a remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. Mm. No, the needle bit my finger. Interesting translation. Over there, nursing a pricked finger is the. Uh, we have Shina Mayuri, a 17 year old high school student, if you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. She's also an otaku, nowhere near Daru's level, though, even though she's clearly making, like, really badass cosplays, so I would beg to differ. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women, and today she's working on costumes at her usual leisurely pace. Why does the Future Gadget Laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. The truth is that Mayuri is completely useless. Still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the Future Gadget Laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me, Mayushi is Okarin's hostage. I belong here. That's not creepy at all. Well, that certainly was cryptic. But her offer was my salvation. For she was the first to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from the solitary life on the run from the organization. I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful. Her being here is enough. Aww. So did Alpaca Man say anything? Yeah, then that. Nope. Nothing. Oh my god, how long is it gonna take to get back to the infinitely more interesting story that we just left? The human-faced alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive you'd think the game was bugged. However, whatever, I give up. Never again will I play with this boring game! I'm sort of getting to that point with this game, too. Damn antisocial alpaca! I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do... Hmm? Hmm? The TV makes sound like it's shorted, and then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. Smacking my electronics doesn't seem to be helping. This crummy TV is on lease from the Braun Tube workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry. <laughs> Damn, I'll have to get it repaired later. I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summer as I stare at a conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. I close my eyes, and what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. Thank you, back to the plot. They're gone. I get it. As I left Radikon, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores, gone. In the restaurants, gone. Even the cars, vanished. Drivers and all. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores, but those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remaining. 
heat was rising from the asphalt in waves, but I felt only a cold chill run down my spine. I just stood there, breathless, until... What's wrong? Mayuri's voice brought me back to reality. Mayuri hadn't disappeared. Yay! She was right there, looking at me with questioning eyes. Everyone disappeared just now, right? Uh... You saw it too, right? Just before your very eyes! Panic took hold as the enormity of what I had just ha of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mayuri by her slender shoulders and shook her. Did you see it, Mayuri? You just saw it, right? Um. Mayuri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. I didn't see anything. You didn't? I stopped shaking her and looked her straight in the eyes. She returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. You saw nothing, nothing at all. There were people a second here ago. Uh, people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure. Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know. You're seeing things, aren't you? I'm sure it's just because of the heat. How could she laugh at a time like this? And why was everyone gone to start with? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching summer sun shone right through the gaps between Akaba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radicon, where I had just been a moment before. And that thing is still there. Yup, 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 we know. There it was, an enormous machine, like some kind of satellite, embedded in the roof of the building where, not five minutes before, I had found Makise Kirisu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makise Kirisu might still be in that dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was, the fuck is that? <laughs> What the hell is that satellite doing there? Right before Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, the building shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it, someone had placed a satellite-like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. But that's not what I was seeing now. This satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was, when did that happen? Mayuri, about that satellite. <sighs> Yep, what a surprise, huh? What do you mean? What was a surprise? It made a huge kaplow sound! A huge kaplow. It certainly did make a sound. But I don't think it was kaplow. I'd say it was more like <laughs> Did that satellite fall out of the sky? 
のかな宇宙人さん乗ってるのかな Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? Yeah, she's not gonna be much help here, dude. Had I lost my mind? What I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt it all? So Am I just associating really hard? Hey, you two! Just then, a uniformed policeman ran up to us, his expression stern. What do you think you're doing here? This area is off limits. You need to leave. We're sorry. So, you're safe, okay? Cause I'm calling you on the okay. Can you don't get a good one? Just keep that going on. First, my good man, let's call you Officer A. Cause yeah, cops love it when you do that. I have one question. Officer A. I'm a cop. Thousands of people just vanished. You saw it too, didn't you? Always a great thing to say to the cops. What are you talking about? Get out of here! I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Makisa Kirizu and get him to call an ambulance before I could. Look, I don't have time for your nonsense. The policeman took me by the upper arm and said, No one got stabbed at Radikan. What? How could you say that with such certainty? While, while I was still trying to comprehend the situation, the policeman forcefully led us away. Because I'm pretty sure Radikan didn't happen. Because that thing crashed into it before it started, because time travel. We were escorted up to the UPX and released. There were people at the UPX, like usual. Actually, there were far more people than usual. The place was packed. Okay. What's happening? Why are we not moving forward? Just as Officer A said, Chiodori had been blockaded by police so no one could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. Which is where we find ourselves now. Which brings us to the present. And which brings this episode to a close. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please check out the poll in the description below or leave me a comment, and who knows, your wish just might get granted. Toodles!